You're going to see sides of her in this series that you've never seen before or may not seem authentic to her and having her go through the typical teenage experience and trying to avoid making her every other human was immensely important to me and, and I hope that, that that care translates. Hi, my name is Jenna Ortega and this is how I became Wednesday Adams. I first heard about the role of Wednesday shooting a horror film with A24 called X, and I got an email one day that Tim Burton wanted to meet with me for the role of Wednesday Adams. I was pretty taken aback. I didn't know if he had any familiarity with who I was, but then also Wednesday I actually was compared to my entire life. So it was just kind of a weird circumstance. I kind of felt like I was being pranked or something. I was always compared to Wednesday. Uh, because I'm very dry and I don't think people can tell when I'm being serious or when I'm being sarcastic. And I didn't think it was that bad until we were on set sometimes and Tim might say, oh, that was dark. When I first got offered the role, I did not even consider fan base. I didn't consider it until we were shooting or when I started having conversations with Netflix and they were talking about things like Comic-Con and Funko Pops. I think that's when it really started to settle in. The internal panic that I faced, the pressure of, oh, people live for this character. People tattoo this character on their bodies. She, she's been a consistent Halloween costume for years. I still panic about her. I still lay awake at night staring up the ceiling thinking, I should have done this. And it's been done so flawlessly in the past. And that wasn't a trade of Wednesday. That's something that Christina started. It is scary. It's a lot of pressure. And you, you want to do justice to someone like her. And there's a lot of anticipation and, and expectation. And what an incredible job. And I think that I had to go to work every day and remember, it's a Netflix show. You know, my mom is an ER nurse, she saves lives. I want to make people feel good and I want to give them that break and that's all it is. Christina didn't join the shoot till towards the end. I was a really big admirer of her work. The strange thing is we never talked about her being Wednesday once. I think maybe one time on the last week of shooting, I made a reference to her Wednesday, but I think that we both were able to appreciate the fact that they were gonna be different. I didn't want to knock her off and I didn't want to be doing some impression of her and I think it was really important that we just kept our, our ideas separate. Physicality wise, I it's funny, I think my posture has improved immensely since working on that job because I always made sure I had a straight back. I didn't move my hands or arms much if I didn't have to. At some point during the first couple weeks of shooting, I did a take where I did not blink at all and Tim said, I don't want you to blink anymore. So that's another thing too where it's just weird mannerisms. We try to incorporate things like that. The thing about the blinking is I didn't realize that I was doing it. It just kind of happened because every time we started to take, I would reset my face. I would drop all the muscles in my face. And Tim really liked the Kubrick stare where I stared through my eyebrows. It's just a bit intimidating. I think something like that is not blinking. Clearly it struck something with him and I trust his opinion so much because he's Tim Burton. It's funny watching him work. When he genuinely appreciates something, he gets excited like a kid. And I also didn't want to seem like I was doing too much with my voice, but I think that there is something about her that is formal. I mean, she's so intelligent. She has incredible vocabulary. I'm stubborn, single-minded, and obsessive, but those are all traits of great writers and serial killers. I kind of altered my pitch a little bit, I think at times, and also the way that I pronounce certain words. I know that they wanted to bring some sort of realistic aspect to her and make her more of a, a human being. So I tried, and maybe in more dramatic scenes or more intense scenes, to kind of drop it a little bit. Attempted murder charges. How would that have looked on your record? Terrible. Everyone would know I failed to get the job done. A normal day on the set of Wednesday. I would wake up around 4.30. I'd be picked up around 5.20-ish. So I get dressed, then I go to hair and makeup. And then after, I pretty much go straight to set and I start blocking, and then we start shooting immediately after. And we would do 12-hour days. We would have rolling lunches, so we just eat when we could. After shooting, I might have a couple of lessons. I might go to stunt rehearsal to learn the fight sequence that we have going on for the next day, so I'd do that for an hour. And then I might have a cello lesson, and then I go home. That was my day, that was my life for eight months in Romania. The first time I went on set, I had a walkthrough with Tim. And the first set that I saw was the dorm room, Enid and Wednesday's dorm room. And it was wonderful, they had just put up the stained glass. But I remember also being a bit nervous or a bit, okay, this is gonna be my environment, kind of feeling it out. And it was helpful because I was just getting to know 
the beautiful and wonderful Emma Myers for the first time he plays Enid. The dynamic between Wednesday and Enid is one of my favorite dynamics in TV. You know, it's dark storm cloud and sunshine. It's always so fun to play off of one another and it's very rare that I meet someone and feel instantly connected or comfortable with them and Emma has always been that person and I think anyone would with her. She's that kind and genuine of a person and another one of my favorite people on this planet. First season of a show, we did kind of just jump into it. There was a lot of different things we were doing. Archery, fencing, canoeing, cello. When you do a television series, I feel like first season, you're still discovering the character in yourself because we've never seen Wednesday as a teenage girl. She's always been an eight, 10 year old. And you know, when young children say really dark things so genuinely, it's very sweet and charming in a sense where, you know, as soon as someone gets older and they become a teenager, it's kind of nasty. It's a weird game to play, especially when all anybody wants to see is Wednesday be rude. That's the kind of the charming thing about her. She says what everybody wishes they could say. When I look at you, the following emojis come to mind. Rope, shovel, hole. It was something that I tried to play too at certain beats of the show where if she did have disagreements with someone or something she did do to somebody else was inconsiderate. It was never coming from malicious intent, but just genuine misunderstanding, bringing that layer of innocence back or genuine appreciation for all things a bit more gothic. But we've never spent this much time with Wednesday. She's always been the one-liner. She's always been the one-off. And you're gonna see sides of her in this series that you've never seen before or may not seem authentic to her. And having her go through the typical teenage experience and trying to avoid making her every other human who's immensely important to me and, and I hope that, that that care translates. I do remember though in, in the second episode, I'm playing with this telescope and I'm seeing something in the water and when I was doing it, I kind of did the eyebrow waves and we were playing with it a bit and I told him, I said, I feel like a silent film actor, which I've always wanted to do silent film and it was really exciting for me because I felt like that really encouraged mannerisms or kind of balanced the aspects of surrealism and realism in the film. And that's something I think that he really appreciated as well. So we kept saying, oh, it's like a silent movie. It's like a silent movie. And I think tackling something like that in that way, because they can be very theatrical and dramatic and intense. And that is what the Adams Family is, but it is a hard thing to play with an expressionless character. And also to have an emotional arc as a character and push a series forward. I think something that we, we tried to do when we were shooting though, is with every take, we would try different versions. We would do the flat version, we'd do a version with vocal inflection, a version with expression, so much trial and error, all on camera too. I appreciated Tim too, because if I told him, I said, hey, be straight with me, is this awful? and he would tell me yes or no. By the way, he never called me awful, he's too sweet. You work with someone like Tim, it's like he doesn't even know his own name. Someone with a name like his could very easily use it as an excuse to treat people poorly, and I never got that from him once. Well, in creating a new Wednesday with Tim Burton, I know that he wanted to establish a different look. It was really important to him that there was something different with the hair because, you know, it's her iconic braids, but he wanted there to be a very clear distinction that this was a different girl. And I remember we had hair and makeup tests at, at his place in London, and we tried silver streaks in my hair, short, tiny braids, really long, thick braids. We just tried all different variations. And at some point, the hairdresser that we were working with, Paul, he brought out a, a f clip of fringe. There was something a about it that Tim really enjoyed, but something about it that was a bit off. So I told the hairdresser, I said, hey, maybe maybe just cut my actual hair. He said, are you sure? And I said, hey, if we have time to grow it out, we have time to grow it out, whatever, let's just see. And then he loved it. And that was something that, that we married and we stuck to. And I remember him being very peculiar and specific about the look. You look a little pale. Please excuse Wednesday. She's allergic to color. I think a big part of Wednesday's color, some of it does play in filter. There was a little bit of makeup, but I spent so much time in Romania and it was winter that it got to a point where they used to put makeup on my hands and, and things like that and they just stopped. I would ask the makeup artist like, hey, you don't think I need more? And she said, no, it's kind of almost matching your skin tone now. I lost all melanin. <laughs> Something that I learned from Wednesdays, I think it's always important to play whoever shoes you're stepping into, just a real person just a real person because it's very easy to be caught up in a, in a show like this and, and especially someone who has no emotion to be scared to sh show emotion or scared to do something that's untrue to character but ultimately you've got to be true to yourself and kind of trust yourself in that process and it's just really about trusting your own gut and, and mirroring whatever it is that you stick to and it makes it so much easier to let go at your job and, and explore and uh, have a good time with it.